welcome to Chem with Chem. In this session, we'll be looking at addition versus condensation polymerization. All right, so let's get right into it. First thing to note is what a polymer is. If you're looking at the word polymer, you should be seeing the prefix poly, which means many, and mer, which comes from monomer unit. So it's really a, a long chain that is made up of 50 or more smaller units called monomer units. And there are two types. We have addition and we have um, condensation. So for addition polymerization, the monomer units used to make them are called alkenes. So they're normally referred to as polyalkenes, all right? And when they are formed, when they join together, the mon we only get one product at the end. We just have many of the, the monomer units, the alkene molecules, which are unsaturated. Many of them are joined and we get one long chain at the end. So we're going to use ethene as an example. But before we get into that, so we'll say um, these are made from alkenes, which are unsaturated. So they have the carbon-carbon double bond. So we always look out for this part right here in the monomer units. All right, so, and whenever the, the product is formed, we only get one product, all right? So take, for example, we're going to use ethene. So here, this is an example of ethene and we have the carbon-carbon double bond in the middle. So if ethene is aligned with another ethene molecule, of course, carbon must be taking part in four bonds. Under the right condition of temperature and pressure, the carbon-carbon double bond can break. And we normally put a, a scissor, a pair of scissors right here to see we're cutting the carbon-carbon um, double bond. So when we do that, um, this will make room now for an additional bond on each carbon. So what will happen now, we end up with the molecules joining in this manner. So we'll join all, well, two of them in this case. And then here we go. Join them. And this is what we we'll end up with. If we had another um, eating molecule, we could add it at this end. So we normally put a squiggly, squiggly line at the ends, or we call them stick, I call them sticky ends. So we know that we can add it to this. So this is what the compound would look like, the polymer at the end of the day would look like, and we put N right here. Okay, so this is an ethene molecule, ethene, ethene, and over here we'll get polyethene or polyethene, many ethene molecules um, joined together. All right, so when, so for the joining to occur, as I mentioned before, the carbon, the carbon, carbon double bond has to break. One of the bonds in the, in the double bond um, breaks. When that happens, the carbon now, when that bond breaks, this is what the um, will look like. So where we had, where we had only, 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 well, we now have an additional space on the carbon atom. So this part can join with what happens over the other side. This part breaks as well. And this part can join. So these are the parts that join, which gives us what we have over, over here. All right, so we're just going to use another molecule. So that was ethene. If we were to use, say, propene, of course, the polymer from that would be polypropene. Let's look at what that looks like. So we'd have propene, let's get this back in black. So this is what propene looks like. But for uniformity and just to make, just to make things easier, we normally condense this um, methyl group right here. So we rewrite it like this. So we could rewrite propene like this. So we'll have our CH2 with a carbon-carbon double bond with a H, and then we're rewriting, we're rewriting this methyl group. We're going to condense it into CH3. 
So if we have many propene molecules lined up like this, the same thing applies. Under the right condition of temperature and pressure, we're going to sever or break the carbon-carbon double bond. When we do that, we'll now make space as we break it. We'll make space on the carbon atom for an addition and each carbon atom for an additional bond. So when that happens, we'll end up with follow the pattern. So we we'll start with this part, we'll have CH2, but there's a space for an additional bond. So we right, CH2, we've broken the carbon carbon double bond here. Over here, we've broken this carbon carbon double bond. So we'll now have C with an H, and then we're looking at this CH3. So we'll have to put the CH3 right here. There's space or there's room for an additional bond. So we now bond this to the second molecule. So we'll have now CH2. Then watch the pattern. We're going to have C with H and CH3. So in essence, we're having alternating CH3 in the pattern. And of course, we put the bond to say this could continue. We could put a squiggly line here to say it's a sticky end and we can connect many more to it like that. So we put that in bracket and we put N right here. So this is a propene molecule, another propene molecule, and us drawing it in this form and putting the N right here, we could call this now poly, polypropene, many propene molecules. All right, um, so this is pretty much the, the general format. So each time, let us highlight the repeating pattern. The repeating pattern here, we're seeing alternating CH3, um, which shows us that, hey, this is what one molecule would look like. One molecule would be here, except we'd put back the carbon, carbon, double bond, but we're not going to keep that on it, all right? So that's what it would, it would look like. All right, so we could pretty much represent many other addition um, poly polymers like this, join this arm pattern, join this arm pattern and just replacing that CH3 with whatever the, the other um, thing is. So in the case of um, um, polystyrene, for example, we get that from styrene. This is what styrene looks like. So the monomer styrene looks like this. So we would have carbon, carbon, double bond, and we would have C6H. There's been a bond on um, styrofoam for a while. So this is what styrene looks like. So if we put two of them together, that's C6H5, right? So under the right condition of temperature and pressure, we'll end up with this um, pattern now, which is our or polymer. And the repeating pattern here, let's put down the H's at the top. The repeating pattern here is H, then C6H5, H, C6H5. And we could put the squiggly line here to so that we can add more to it, put this in brackets, and we'll put an N, N is 50 or greater. So this is a styrene molecule and another styrene molecule. And over here, we're seeing polystyrene. The same thing applies for um, vinyl chloride to give PVC, polyvinyl chloride, um, and many others. So this is just a representation. Again, for addition polymers, we have one product form at the end of the day. And the monomers that are used, we have one type of monomer, and it's normally an alkene. So stay tuned, tune into the next video where we will look at condensation polymers. We'll break it down just like this one. If you find value here, you can just leave a like, um, leave a comment as well, and um, be sure to share this with a friend. Thank you for joining. Kim, Kim, couple later.